So now we're going to talk about this thing called a bank reconciliation. And because we use a bank to handle the cash, the bank keeps records of our account independent from what we do. You know, we tend to keep track of cash in our checkbook, but uh, the bank keeps track of the cash separately from us. So when we get a statement from the bank, we like to compare it to the checkbook and we like to make sure that everything that was in the checkbook, the bank is aware of and everything that the bank put on the bank statement, we're aware of. And we'll see sometimes they, things pass, they cross. This has to do with timing differences. You know, if I deposit money in the bank account uh, after the bank is closed, I included that deposit on in my checkbook, but if I recorded it after the bank, if I made the deposit after the bank closed, the bank doesn't know I made the deposit. They'll know the next day, but they won't know that day. If I write a check to somebody on the last day of the month and put it in the mail, by the time that person gets it and then presents it to their bank for payment, it could be a week later. I wrote the check today, I subtracted it from my cash balance today, but the bank doesn't know that. So those are the classic examples um, of things that I put in the checkbook that the bank didn't know about. Now, sometimes the bank does things without telling us. For example, the bank might subtract $10 for a service fee. I don't know about that until I get the statement from the bank. Um, sometimes we use the bank to collect money for us. You have a customer that owes you money, he hasn't paid. Uh, you might go to the bank and say, hey, could you try to collect the money from this guy? I just, everything I've tried doesn't work. Maybe if they get a letter from you, it'll scare them into paying me. Right? If the bank is able to collect the money from that customer, They'll put the money in your account, but they won't tell you until you get the bank statement. Some accounts earn interest. And I don't know how banks calculate interest, right? I mean, it's a very complicated thing. It's based on some kind of average daily balance times some rate that you may not even be aware of. Anyway, you don't know how much interest your account earned until the bank sends you the statement. Uh, sometimes a customer that paid you bounced a check. So these are all examples of things that the bank has knowledge of before you do. And of course, there's always an opportunity to, to make errors. Right, so they walk you through an example here. And um, they're showing you that there could be a difference between what is reported on the bank statement and what we report in the company records. So for example, here, you see this one here. On March 31st, we made a deposit of $2,200, which we probably made after the bank closed because you see, it doesn't show up on the bank statement. If I look at the bank statement on the deposits, I don't see it. This $2,200 is in the checkbook, but it's not here. Here's an example of the bank collecting money for us. The bank collected $3,000 for us. They put it in our account. You know, one of our customers owed us money, paid the bank. The bank put the money in our account, but notice you don't see it here. And here's interest of $20 that we earned on the account that the bank put in the account but we didn't know about it until we got the statement, right? So, I mean, that's what you normally would do. You would, you would compare the checkbook to the bank statement and try to line things up. Same thing with the checks. These are all checks that we wrote. 293, 94, 95, 96, 97, right? These were all checks that we wrote that we either handed to somebody or we put in the mail to pay somebody. Now, if we compare these checks to what was on the bank statement, you can see that this $1,200 check doesn't appear here. 
right? I mailed it to the utility company for whatever reason, maybe it took a week to get there. Uh, and by the time they deposited it, it was after the statement date. Here's a check I wrote on the last day, well, the next to last day of March, $900. By the time I mail it and it gets to where it's supposed to go, it's already in April, right? So these are called checks outstanding. Now here you can see an example of somebody making an error. If you look at this check, check number 294, I entered $2,600 in the checkbook, but the actual amount on the check was 2,900. So we made an error, the company made an error, error of $300. So not only are you reconciling the checks and the deposits, but you're also paying very close attention to the amounts. Um, here's an example of something I paid by transferring money out of the account. In other words, I didn't write a check. $400 I paid for something, uh, a wire transfer, sometimes that's what they're called. Do you pay your bills electronically? I'm sure you do. I know I pay a lot of my bills electronically and you're supposed to enter those in your checkbook, but you know, a lot of people just don't do that. So that's a reason why the checkbook won't agree with the bank statement. Here's a check labeled NSF. You see it here? Not sufficient funds. A customer paid us $750. We deposited that money in our account, but the person didn't have enough money in their account to cover the check. So therefore the bank subtracts that from our balance. And then we would have to go back after that person again to make sure we get paid. Um, here's $200 for something the bank did. They took $200 out of the account, DC. Not really sure what that means. We'll have to go find out. And here's $50 that they took out of our account, SF, I'm imagining that means service fee, All right? Let's see about that, uh, that $200. Debit card. We use the debit card to buy something. That's what that $200 is. <clears throat> so we saw what was in the checkbook, deposits, versus what's on the bank statement, deposits. We saw what's in the, bank, in the checkbook for checks written, what's on the bank statement, not just for checks written, but for any money that came out of the account. And then we do the reconciliation, which is again, another way of saying uh, balance the checkbook. And by the time we're finished, we'll see that both bank and company agree, right? Bank and uh, Bank statement and checkbook both agree, right? This would be the checkbook over here, and this is the bank statement over here. Now, when you're doing these things, the way I like to start them is with the bank side of the reconciliation, because 99 out of 100 times, there are only gonna be two items, two reconciling items on the bank statement side the deposits outstanding and the checks outstanding. What's a deposit outstanding? It's a deposit that I recorded in the checkbook, but it didn't get on the bank statement. That's a deposit outstanding. What's a check outstanding? It's a check I wrote, I subtracted from the bank state, from the checkbook balance, but the bank does not know I wrote that check. Right? It wasn't presented to them for payment during that month. The checkbook side is usually more complicated. We start with the amount that's in the checkbook. In this case, it was 2880. 
And then we need to see, did the bank deposit anything in the account that isn't in the checkbook? So for example, they collected this money for us, $2,800 plus interest of 200. We earned interest on the checking account of $20. And then the bank subtracted all the amounts from, right? They subtracted all these amounts from the checkbook, uh, but we didn't enter them in the checkbook. But when we're finished with all that, we can see that the uh, bank and the checkbook are in agreement. So why don't we do the one for homework, it's exercise nine. Right. And it's a simple one. These things can get very complicated and we just want to make it as simple as possible. So here's the, here's the problem, Exa uh, exercise nine. Spielberg Company's general ledger checkbook, right? Shows a checking account balance of 22,970 on July 31st. The July cash receipts of 1885 included in the checkbook are placed in the night depository at the bank on July 31st and processed by the bank on August 1st. That's their way of telling you that that is a deposit outstanding. The bank statement dated July 31st shows bank service fees of $55. The bank processes all checks written by the company but by July 31st and lists them on the bank statement except for one check totaling 1460, right? That 1460, that is a check outstanding. The bank statement shows a balance of 22,490 on July 31st. So the checkbook says 22,970. The bank statement says 22,490. And now we're gonna to try to figure out why and make sure that both agree. So this is uh, this is exercise four dash nine, right? And this is on page two thirteen. Okay, and we like to put headings on this. This is Spielberg. Company. Bank reconciliation and the date. July 31st, 2021. Okay, now I like to start with the balance per bank, right? And the balance per bank was, according to this, it's the, I think it's the last number they gave you, 22,490. And we're gonna add Add deposit outstanding. And the deposit outstanding was the amount they gave you, right? The July cash receipts of 1885 included in the general ledger balance or placed in the night depository bank and processed by the bank on August 1st. 1885. 
less less check outstanding. Right now, when you see the word less, that means minus, right? Subtract, put a minus sign. The check outstanding was, where is it? It was one check, 1460. Right. So that's probably it for that part of the problem. So let's leave that uh, the way it is now, right? We'll total everything up at the end. Now we have balance per, I'm going to say checkbook, right? Balance per check. And that's 2297. Right now, is there anything to add? We're looking to add if the bank deposited money in the account, anything that wasn't in the checkbook. So if I go through the problem again, there is nothing. There is nothing. So I'm not going to put anything there. I'll, I'll put the word add there just to remind you that there could be something that belongs there. As far as less, did the bank take any money out of the account? Yes, they did. What did they take money out of the account for? The bank took $55 out of the account for fees, service fees. Right, so now we're going to see if both sides agree. Twenty two thousand nine fifteen. Now the books call this adjusted cash balance, right? So that's probably what you're going to have to say in your answer. But what I like to call it is not adjusted cash balance because when you hear the word adjusted, don't you think of adjusting entries? And you can never adjust cash, right? Isn't that one of the rules? So what I like to call this is correct, corrected cash balance, right? But you're going to have to call it what Connect wants you to call it, right? Which is probably going to be adjusted cash balance. All right, so now we've, uh, we've uh, balanced the checkbook. We can see that after we accounted for all the differences, right? The, the correct balance of cash is 22,915. If I was making a balance sheet this day, that would be the number I would use, 22,915. Is that okay with everybody? This, this problem is much simpler than the one you saw in the book. Right. Now, there's a problem. There's a little problem, not a big problem, a little one. Right now, the accounting records show that we have $22,970 in cash. In reality, this is what we have, 22,915. So I have to make a journal entry correcting that. I have to make a journal entry recording this $55 service fee, right? You know, anytime the bank puts money in your account and you didn't know about it, those represent debits to cash. You're going to have to debit cash for those amounts. Anytime the bank took money out of your account that you didn't know about, those are credits to cash. 
you're going to have to make entries for those for those amounts. So, for example, for here, now you know this was part two of the problem, right? Part two. This up here was part one. But now it's July thirty first. And I want to show this $55 as what? What do you think we should call that? Isn't that an expense? The bank took $55 out of your account. It's an expense, right? And the way the books show it, they call it miscellaneous. So debit miscellaneous expense and credit cash, right? Because if the bank took $55 out of your account, didn't cash decrease? Absolutely it did, right? Absolutely. Okay, now I wanna try something that we haven't done before. I want you now to try to do one. All right, so I don't know if you can get a piece of paper out. Uh, we're gonna do exercise 10. Let's take a look at exercise 10, just so you get a little more practice doing it. Number 10. On August 31st, 2021, the general ledger of the Dean Acting Academy shows a balance for cash of 79.44. Cash receipts yet to be deposited in the checking account total 3,338. And checks written by the academy but not yet processed by the bank total 1425. The company's cash does not reflect a bank service fee of $35 and interest earned on the checking account of $46. These amounts are included in the balance of cash of 6042 reported by the bank at the end of August. Prepare a bank reconciliation to calculate the correct ending balance of cash. Record the necessary entries to adjust the cash balance. All right, so maybe you can try to do that, right? Use Use as an example the one we just did. All right, and try to do try to do that one, right? This would be exercise 4-10, which is also on page 213. All right, now let's set it up. Uh, the Dean Acting Academy. Bank Reconciliation. August 31st, 2021. All right, and we like to start with balance per bank, right? And the balance per bank was the last number for some reason, 6042, right? And we're gonna have add, we're gonna have add, and we're gonna have less. Right, and we're going to have corrected cash balance. All right, and on this side, we're going to have balance per checkbook. And the balance in the checkbook was what? Is that the first number? 79.44, add, right, and less. Okay. 
and corrected cash balance. All right, so take a few minutes to see if you can work that out, right? And then we'll do the journal entry after that. Um, that 3,338, right, should be handled as a deposit in transit. Again, they kind of like masked the way it should have been handled, but that's what it is. Uh, deposit outstanding.
Okay, so let's see. Okay. So we, we know the balance that the bank statement says we have. This is what the checkbook says we have. You see, there's a difference there, right? There's like a $1,900 difference. And you, you wouldn't you get nervous? You say, well, gee, my, this, I thought this is how much I had, right? They say I only have this. I, are they cheating me? Are they, did they take $1,900 out of the account without telling me? I better check this out, right? So that's what the reconciliation, that's, that's kind of what it's for. So again, I like to start with the bank side first. And I'm looking for deposits outstanding and checks outstanding, right? So if I read through this, that 3,338, cash receipts yet to be deposited into the checking account. In other words, I didn't put them in the account yet. Uh, cash receipts yet to be deposited into the checking account total 338. So that's the same as saying that I had a deposit outstanding. Three thousand three hundred thirty-eight. Right, and checks written by the academy, but not yet processed by the bank. Fourteen twenty-five. That's checks outstanding. And remember, less means minus. Right, minus fourteen twenty-five. Okay. Right? Now, what else is there? The company's balance of cash does not reflect the service fee of $35, right? So the bank took $35 out of the account for a service fee and interest earned on the checking account of $46. Now we didn't see that before. The bank put $46 in the account interest earned $46, right? So now let's see if both sides are equal, right? So $79.55. Right, so let's pray this comes out to be 79.55 over here too. And sure enough, it does. So that means when all is said and done, we didn't make any mistakes. The bank didn't make any mistakes. It's just that we did things to the account that the bank didn't know about. And the bank did things to the account that we didn't know about. But after we took all of those things into consideration, everything agrees. All right now the problem we have is that we have to make a journal entry, right, for the interest earned and these service fees. Now I like to do it in two entries. I guess theoretically you could do it in one Right? Theoretically, you could do it in one, but let's, let me do it in two. August 31st, debit cash, $46, right? This $46, the bank put $46 in our account. I have to debit cash for $46. And why did I get that $46? interest revenue, right? Isn't that interest revenue? Right now I have a second entry I have to make for the $35 service fee. Debit miscellaneous.
expense, 35. Credit cash, 35. Right? So now when I'm finished, when I post these two entries to the accounts, cash increases by 46, it decreases by 35. Now my cash account will say 79.55. If I was doing a balance sheet that day, this is what cash would be reported as, 79.55. Could I do it in one entry? Right. Let's say or. Okay. Now. How much cash ultimately wound up going in the account? Plus 46 minus 35, that's net 11, isn't it? So I would debit cash for $11. Debit miscellaneous expense, 35. and credit interest revenue for 46. Okay, don't the debits equal the credits? 11 plus 35 is 46, credits are 46, right? So if you're comfortable doing one entry, and again, I don't know what Connect is going to expect you to do. I don't know whether they're looking for one entry or two. I think the problem we have, it only is one entry, right? This was the problem that we had just this one for $55. But on an exam, I'm not sure if you have to do it or not, if they would want you to do uh, two entries or one. I like doing two, uh, but you know, they may tell you that you have to do one. Any questions about bank reconciliation, balancing the checkbook? See, these days, I mean, almost everybody has a checking account. But my experience is people just get the statement and throw it in their drawer. They don't even open it and look. Or maybe they open it and look and they see as long as it's close, that's fine. Uh, you know, a lot of us get paid direct deposit, so we never really go to the bank to make deposits anymore. Uh, a lot of us pay our bills by having the money automatically taken out of our account. Uh, people don't carry cash like they used to. So you're using your credit card or your debit card to buy things day to day. And as a result, a lot of people don't really look at this. And uh, you know, you're trusting that the bank is, is doing what they're supposed to do. Um, and as long as nothing blows up, you know, most people don't look any further than this. But really, you know, you should get into the habit. If you had a business, you have to do this, right? You have to do this. Because, uh, yes, banks make mistakes, but you have employees working for you and your employees are handling the cash and the temptation is very great, you know, for cash to be taken somehow. Uh, this isn't foolproof, but this is one of the ways you would find out if something like that was happening. The other thing is, if you don't do the reconciliation, you're never going to record these amounts. So the bank could be putting money in your account every month. The bank could be taking money out of your account every month, and you're not making any journal entries for that. So really, you know, it would be sloppy if you didn't do it. Any question? Does anybody have any question about chapter three? All right, let's do this. Now that we know a little bit, let's go back.
Let's go back and look at the exam. Again, don't get excited about the numbers, right? Because your, <coughs> your numbers will be different. But here's the bank reconciliation. And just if you look at the answer, right? You've got deposits outstanding, you've got checks outstanding, right? We've seen that in the two examples that we did today. If you look at the uh, company's balance, you've got service fees that are being subtracted. And notice you have NSF check. Remember what an NSF check is. Somebody gave you a check. You deposited it in your account. You were very happy with that. But when your bank went to collect the money from that person's bank, it wasn't there. The check bounced. So on the bank statement, the bank is subtracting this $150 from their balance if you want your checkbook to agree with the bank, you have to now subtract this $150 from the balance, right? So we didn't see that in any of the examples that we did, but here it is, NSF check. It gets subtracted from the company's cash balance. Right? And notice how they refer to it before reconciliation and after reconciliation, right? Let's see what else we have. Here's an adjusted trial balance. Do an income statement. So does everything here go on the income statement? What goes on the income statement, right? We've said this from chapter one, revenues and expenses. So if you look, usually it's just these numbers here on the bottom of the trial balance. Everything from service revenue down, that goes on the income statement. And I don't think there's anything more complicated about, about that, right? Balance sheet. They gave you an after-closing trial balance. Well, the after-closing trial balance, the revenue accounts have been closed, the expense accounts have been closed, the dividend accounts have been closed. The only thing that's left are the assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity accounts. So the, the only thing that makes this problem challenging, because everything that you see here goes on the balance sheet, right? Every single thing that you see here goes on the balance sheet. What makes this problem challenging for you, you know, being beginners, is to know which are current assets and which are long-term. So everything from cash to supplies is short-term or current and everything from long-term investments to accumulated depreciation is long-term. The only other thing to remember <clears throat> is that accumulated depreciation gets subtracted, right? So everything gets added except accumulated depreciation gets subtracted. And notice that you're gonna have a total for the current assets and a second total for the long-term assets and you add those two together to get the total asset. With the liabilities, we have to distinguish between current and long-term. Current and long-term. What's current? Anything that gets paid within the next 12 months. So this is as of December 31st, 2021. So any liability that gets paid between January 1st of 2022 and December 31st of 2022 is current. Anything that gets paid after 2022 is long-term. So notice that we have accounts payable, notes payable that are due this year, and interest payable. These are all current liabilities. This note, which isn't due for 10 years <clears throat> or nine, right? This note is long-term. So when you're doing the balance sheet, you need to distinguish between current and long-term. 
Stockholders' equity doesn't change. Stockholders' equity for us is always common stock and retained earnings. In this whole course, it will never be anything more than that, common stock and retained earnings, right? And here, you didn't have to calculate anything. You just copied the numbers over. All right, now, stockholders' equity statement. Here's your beginning amounts. Here are some of the ending amounts, right? So here's your retained earnings on, where is it? Here's your common stock. 73,000, 73,000. The retained earnings is 83,000. Now, where did that come from? <clears throat> where did that come from? Because here it says 59. Well, we're going to have to add net income, 37, and subtract dividends, 13. So 59 plus 37 minus 13 is 83. That's a total of 156. Now, during 2022, net income was 51, dividends was 18. Add 51, subtract 18, and you'll come out to this 116. All right, but what about stock? The stock increased by 22, you see how to read what it said here? All right, 3,000 additional shares were sold for 22,000. You need to add the 22. All right, so that's where you're coming up with these numbers for that. All right? So that's your exam. See, so Santa Claus came early this year, right? He's showing you what's on the exam. Right. Any questions now? Anybody? Anybody alive out there? Yes. Okay. I'm glad to hear it. All right. So um, if there's no questions, that is, uh, that is it. All right, that'll be it for today. So uh, I will see you next Wednesday, 8, 8 a.m. All right? Wait, when is our next homework due? Friday. And then after that, next Friday? Next Friday. Okay. Go on Blackboard. Don't depend on me. Look on. All, right. All right, guys. So I'm going to sign off now. All right. Have a good have day. A good... Right. Have a good day, Professor. Yeah, you too.